Hello, thank you for coming to Talky Talks first, and hopefully not the last uh, live show that we've invited to do. Um, I'm Sam, the producer and presenter. We're going to introduce ourselves, Clive. Hiya, yeah, Clive Hayward, you'll have seen me on the telly. Um, brilliant. Thanks, thanks for coming. Um, absolutely lovely to see everybody. Um, we hope we're not going to bore you too much, and I promise Paul Watton's coming soon. Yeah, we hope. That's this is, this is my very good friend Tom Kelly. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I've come all the way from Sussex for this evening to, uh, tonight, so pleasure to be here. Thank you for... Why didn't you mention it? <laughs> thank you very much for all turning out. Uh, it means an awful lot, um, especially where at the start of the year where our football club was. Um, I don't think any of us would have believed we'd be on stage tonight, uh, you know, nine months later. So uh, pleasure to be here. Thanks for coming and enjoy the show. Chris? Hi, I'm Chris. Um, Thanks for coming. It's, yeah, as Tom said, really, it's, it's just incredible that we've been welcomed and invited in such a way you'd never have imagined it from where we were six months ago. But uh, yeah, pleasure to be here. Um, I've come all the way from work in Exeter. Not as far as Tommy, but yeah, that's, uh, that's all I can offer so far. Uh, yeah, my name is Dom, or Dominic to people we don't like. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I've come from Exeter as well, but don't hold it against me. Um, yeah, thank you for coming tonight. I've been coming to talk to you for 35 years. Um, they weren't very, made very welcome recently, but this is, this is amazing to be invited in, to do this tonight, so we'll give it our best, um, be nice, <laughs> and we'll just, we'll just have a good chat about the game and, and whatever, won't we? Sam will compare as usual, so yeah. no pressure, Sam. So basically, no, <laughs> so basically uh, we're going to also have bits from the Talking Night Supporters Trust and from the Travel Club as well celebrate all the good work we've been doing. Uh, we would normally, if you haven't watched us before on our YouTube show, talk about the game. Now, it would have been a lot easier if uh, the lads would have caught it off on Saturday, but they didn't. So we we'll start with we we'll start with well in a way on Saturday. Hands up if anyone went and watched it. Who, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Does on the stream count? Yeah, I was streaming. Yeah, so, streaming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that also counts. It's, it's more sort of angry on the stream, really. The game, you can't. The game, you let it out, where you're just kind of showing at his uh, TV, aren't you? When uh, when that, but Clive, what were your thoughts? Well, if you're a bit hazy about the game those days, were it? Um, yeah, the first half <laughs> passed in an absolute flash. I was uh, sat, I was standing in fact in the front of my old mate Mark Hurst, and we were talking mainly about Croatia. Um, we had a good view of the goal that was disallowed, which was a bit farcical, really. Um, second half at the other end, uh, their goal was good, wasn't it? Did anybody see it? Really good. Um, they caught us twice at the end. It, it happens, I think Welling is shaping up to be one of those grounds, isn't it? Very much so. Um, I hate Welling. Um, I think it's fair to say though, um, obviously they're looking to move stadium, I believe, and I think they've done a really good job with their fan zone there. I want to put that on the record. Um, they've done the best with what they've got. And, uh, no, but uh, uh, they, it was a good example of uh, what other clubs could be like in terms of the fan zone. Um, yeah, it was just a frustrating afternoon, wasn't it? I mean, I felt we were the better side in the first half. We had control uh, of the game. Uh, Love it made a couple of good saves, but we never really tested it, did we? Unfortunately, and uh, although he made a couple of good saves, that's all he really did. Um, I think he did really well with the, uh, <laughs> the chat. Some of the yellow army there calling his name. Uh, for 90 minutes, um, but look, it's it's going to be bumps in the road, isn't it? I mean, Neil Warnock said it, the consortium has said it. There's going to be results like that, you know. To have, I think we had maybe two thirds of the crowd there. It seemed to me, anyway. Um, you know, we're a big name to be shot down in this division. And uh, as a former manager once said, you know, if you average two points a game in this division, you win the league. Eight games in, we've got 16 points. So. And we're fit. And we're fit, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> after 10 games, I'm, yeah, just, going by, I'm <laughs> just going by it because I'm a fan, you know. Enough. So <laughs> Gary Johnson, he knows what he's talking about. Um, yeah, and then the second half, we've hit the woodwork twice. All Lummies made a really good save to tip it onto the bar. And as Clive said, we just got caught on the break. Some silly mistakes on our part. Uh, the second goal, don't really count, to be honest. You know, we're pushing for the, an equaliser. They catch us on the break and obviously gives it away. Hey ho, one of those games, move on. Uh, there's 40 on still to go, so no panic here. 
I'll remind you of that. It doesn't count when we don't go up by one point there. Yeah. I, I can offer my sister, I hope she doesn't watch this because I'm about to publicly shame her, but my sister's a, a qualified referee. And I'll say this before Paul gets here because we might end up in an argument otherwise. But he, she's offered, I've showed her the video that I disallowed goal, and she tells me the reason why it's disallowed is because of the intent to touch the ball and the previous touch was from a talkie player. So if it hits you, it doesn't count. But if there's in, it does count, it is in, it's offside because there's no intent to play the ball. If it's a forward motion to play the ball, it's then intentional touch and therefore it's on. I don't know either. But that's I'm, garbage. I've tried, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> oh, I disagree. Tell, I don't think it's, 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 it's total rubbish. rubbish. It's just right now. <laughs> is it true that the linesman was, the, the referee was a linesman at Ashton Gate? Um, yeah, I believe so. Apparently so. Yeah. No comment. <laughs> but yeah, it's one of those. It's, it's context, isn't it? We're fifth. We're fifth. We're doing all right. Um, it's yeah. If you just, as we speak to Paul later, if, you know, brand new squads. I still feel like if we can get enough consistency, we've got more than enough to definitely challenge going forward. But yeah, anything else to add? I mean, we did. We did almost score. Yeah, after we said there was yeah, shots to be had. Win. I think Paul was right when he said. It's down to us as well. Um, mm. You'll get bad decisions in this league, I think, won't you? Uh, you know, it's the level of officiating. I think you've got to deal with it and just still win. Um, Reese had a good game, didn't he? Yeah, of um, course. Yeah. The ex player comes back to bite you. Um, yeah, and they, they just got a bit of confidence at the end and took advantage of it, didn't they? That, that first goal they scored was poor defending. I think we talked about it, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Um, Carson Betts, the guy switching to to get, come into midfield, he knows he's going to come in on his left, and then I think Oscar loses the man while watching, yeah. and then it just trickles in the net, doesn't it? And that's, that's when you think it's not going to be our day, don't we? And, and that was a frustrating part. They didn't look like scoring, did they? They hadn't really been near our goal. Hamer made the one save low down, but other than that, they didn't look like scoring, did they? And then it's probably my fault because I said to my son about 20 weeks ago, well, they're not going to score, it's just whether we can or not. So that's probably my fault that they scored. But yeah, that's the frustration. It was just one moment, one, one, one second in time where we've not tracked and that's what cost us on, on the day. It was just one of those games that you just thought to yourself, we're not going to score here, we're not going to win here. Um, I think the, the first goal he's actually done quite well to get it because although it's poor defending on our part as the ball's gone into the box, he scuffed, he scuffed it in. I think if he gets a proper contact, I don't think he scores. Um, I think it again, it's just one of those unfortunate results. We weren't at 100%. Uh, missing a couple of good players in Folston and uh, Hayfield, uh, they proved to be mi big misses on Saturday, sadly. Um, but again, you know, a defeat at Welling isn't going to define our season. Plenty of time still to go and uh, yeah, I think we all would have taken being in the top seven at this stage of the season early on, considering, you know, from where we've uh, been over the summer. So uh, yeah, just keep the faith, keep going and uh, on to the next one. Yeah, we got National League, didn't we? Simple as that, really. Um, <laughs> What do we want to talk about next? FA Cup Saturday, isn't it? Who's going? Anyone going? Who's going? Nice. Loads. Loads of that, isn't it? It's what FA Cup is about, isn't it? Going to these grounds, definitely. Love it. It's sort of, it almost. Not even again. I said love it, did I? About the world war. Obsessed, you are. Obsessed, mate. So anyway, um, we were talking about this before, it, it, it's got slight sort of Limington vibes about it, hasn't it? I hope it doesn't rain as much as it did that day, but obviously, you know, 7 0 would be welcome. Um, I think they might rest a couple, to be honest. Um, it's the sort of game where you might be able to get away with that. Um, he did so say he might bring a couple of players in, didn't he? So that's going to be interesting to see if that's. That was right at the end of the interview, yeah. wasn't it? He just sort of nipped in a little bit, and yeah. he almost was like. I thought he said that. I don't want you then, to hear this. Yeah, I had to watch it back a second time, but um, yeah, it's almost like a mini window, isn't it? Um, really that you've got a week with no league matches it is a time to have a bit of a reset really so where do you guys think we need to wait through from on the wings yeah but we don't play winners no but still could improve i think we will cover that <laughs> so okay uh but i think yeah i think it'd be a big occasion i mean i want to introduce the next bit though for the test as we know if you want to join us and whoever's the select speakers um, the Tuss have obviously done an amazing job for the football club. Let's have a round of applause. So thank you. Here we go. And 
uh, yeah, I just want to explain for those who don't know that the mouse and what a journalist is like for the task and sort of... Telling me that, perhaps. Yeah, and also that. Yeah, like you do that. Yeah, yeah hi everybody. Um, my name is Matt Bullman. Uh, so I'm one of the 12 members, I think, currently on the on the TUS board. Um, so the last uh, six, seven months have been quite a journey, really. Um, I was talking to Bob, who's sat over there next to John, uh, about this earlier on, and we were sort of, um, Bob actually said to me, if, you, if we had to sort of kind of envisage our best possible outcome, this has got to be it. Yeah. it you know, it's, it's beyond, beyond that, to be yeah. fair, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, we, we were, I sat on a strategy team, which was like a sub, sub team of the trust, and we've been planning for, I don't know, probably the last three or four years um, as to what we would do um, if, if the, uh, the previous ownership decided to chuck in the town. So this wasn't going to be something that was, we knew it would happen at some point, and uh, we had various plans in place. And to be frank, when it did happen, it was, you know, all, hands to the deck, um, and, and this, this outcome was just, you know, this couldn't have been better for us really. To, to have a, a team of, of supporters running our football club, who are not only supporters, but they're guys with business acumen, uh, who've been prepared to put their money where their mouth is, is just fantastic. And, and for a long, long time, we at the Trust were banging our head against the brick wall with the previous regime. I'm not going to go into the previous regime because it's gone, it's, it's historic now, but this is a completely different world now. This is open door policy and anything goes. And uh, I think I think that's um, vindicated now by, if you look at the, the number of members that we've got at the Trust, just before the crisis we were around 400. And as of today, we've got 1,083 members of the Trust, which is just incredible. Now, admittedly, the community share issue has certainly helped for that because, as hopefully you're all aware, to partake in the community share issue, you need to be a member of the Trust. But that's probably only added about 200, 200 members. And so it just goes to show that when there's no barriers in the way, everybody pulls together, everybody's heading in the right direction. It's just fantastic. It's a pleasure to come to a game now and play more. Everybody you speak to says the same thing. There's smiling faces wherever you look. Whether you win, lose or draw, or you walk away feeling good. Yeah. We're all part of something, aren't we? Absolutely. It's, 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 it's just amazing. Like, as you say, anyone can come and go to the sort of chairman and CEO and have an idea. And then they're like, yeah, no, we we'll listen to it. And you know, then the next thing is like, bring some data now, we're going to improve all this, and we're all sort of working together. It just shows what an amazing community we are at Talk United and how I mean, the task works has been phenomenal. Yeah, I think we always thought that supporters would, would pull together, but you never quite know until, until the time is there. And I think apart from the community share issue and, and how that's worked, if you look at things like the Paint Up Playmore project that yeah. Nick Broderick uh, the, the, the trust chairman has been responsible for. It's been fantastic, you know, to turn up there and you know meet so many different people um, there with their paintbrushes and do whatever they need to do, sanding down. I mean, I'm absolutely rubbish at DIY, but I'm quite happy to be there, sanding away, painting away. It just gives you, you feel like there's some ownership there. It's our club, you're happy to do it, and it's just fantastic. And if you're given respect by the owners, you'll, you'll give it back, won't you? That's 100%, yeah, 100%. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, that's brilliant. So, about the trust fund, that's fund. How How's that all? For those who don't know, if you don't know, um, just explain a bit about that and kind of the response and how phenomenal it's been. Yes, yeah, so at the, uh, the start of the new ownership regime, we, we had quite a lot of involvement with uh, Michael Westcott uh, beforehand, as, as many of you will be aware. And Michael made it very clear that he wanted the trust to be an important part uh, of the future ownership of the club. So the community share issue was always something that we were, were looking to, to put in place to try and raise funds for the club. And we launched it on the 23rd of August, uh, which was after quite a long period of time of putting it all together. At the end of the day, all of us on the trust board are people that are volunteers. We've got no particular expertise in certain matters, so we had to spend time and effort to try and work out 
what we needed to do. So eventually we pulled all this together and we set ourselves a minimum target of £100,000, which if we were to reach that £100,000, plus the £50,000 that was to be injected from the Forever Yellow Fund, it was agreed with the Brink Consortium that it would, it would give us two seats on the club board. So uh, we, we started that off on the 23rd of August and, and literally as at now, which is I think pretty much to the day, halfway through the five week share issue, we're at £162,251. It's just phenomenal. We've had 364 investors. Uh, so there's, uh, if you were to look at the crowdfunded total, it will be 8,750 less than the figure I've just quoted. But I did say to you tonight, Sam, I'd exclusively <laughs> reveal the total number. Um, so we've had some offline investors as well. These are people who want to pay by cheque, manual application form. So that's the combined figure. So the bit that I think is phenomenal is, is 364 separate investors. You know, this isn't about somebody chucking in 20 grand, 30 grand. The average investor's put in 443 pounds. So it's been set at a level which hopefully is affordable for people, and people have just responded phenomenally. It's just incredible, beyond really what we thought we would achieve. You yes, don't know just saying that. I'm sure you're going to say it anyway. That's on top of the 400 or so TUS members that over the last five years have diligently put money in towards trust so that we've accumulated the amount of money that was, is more than £50,000. So on top of that is the £50,000 from the Forever Yellow Fund. So it's kind of the new people that come in, plus it's the people who have always been there who have accumulated that massive amount to begin with. So yeah. I just felt I need to say that. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> So I mean, like it's 210 or something thousand. Yeah, so the total investment into the club, as you say, is just yeah. over 210,000 pounds. So that translates to a 23.75% shareholder in the football club if all of those monies today were to be invested at the agreed terms of the football club. That goes up. We hit our two, we hit 200,000, that goes up to about 27%. We get to the 200,000 pounds so 250,000 pounds um, stretch target, that gives us about 31% of shareholding for the Can I just ask, the, you said about the, the seats on the board and the money investment we talked about, the co-chairman covered it in terms of, <coughs> excuse me, to a degree what it's gonna actually fund when the share scheme's close. What, how much input will the trust have in terms of that? Or is this very much um, for the club ownership and board to, to use as a, see fit, whether that be player investment, whether that be stadium investment, whether that be so I love boots and laces. Is there any say from the Tusk board or is it kind of, to, or was it done together? Very much done together. I mean, the, uh, the, the, two, the two directors that will be on the board will have an equal share in line with all the other directors. Uh, so uh, any votes on uh, decisions will be yeah, based on you know, equal numbers and, and equal sort of votes. So I think, um, in answer to your question, there isn't any specific uh, purpose that the money at this stage is being raised for. I think, I think what worried me at the outset of the share issue was that with the Brink Consortium coming in and investing all their money, that maybe everybody thought the club was saved. Yeah. And uh, certainly, yes, they did save the club, undoubtedly, but it's not just about the initial cost, it's about making sure there's enough cash flow to be able to fund the club moving forward. And certainly, I know that uh, the Brink Consortium had built into their model that we would raise a certain amount of money, which we've hit that and, and gone well beyond that, which is fantastic. So everything now is a bonus over and above what they were anticipating. So in terms of what the extra money will be used for, you know, maybe it could be for some loan signings, it could be yeah. for other infrastructure around the club, I don't know. But that will all be agreed um, you know, amongst the board, of which will have two seats on the board. The part about it, which still, when you see them interview together, which I still kind of struggle to get my head around, I was genuinely amazed about when we had them on Girls Like You in the summer, was the fact they didn't know each other. Somehow I just kind of knew just from the way that they've been in public and from the way that they've come across through all the public work they've done was they look like almost kind of like friends who come on mate we need to do this together yeah this is our club type thing but they basically just didn't know each other and somebody put them in contact with each other and said yeah we need to do this we've got the expertise and the finance and the will and the passion to do it so that to then see what they've done together with then with you know with the other members of the of the consortium and the trust board is, is extraordinary when you think months ago they'd never met. 
but it's that one common thing. Isn't yeah. it? We're all talking United supporters, so it's amazing how something like a football club can bring you all together. Yeah. You know, and it just shows what you can get from unity and everybody pulling in the same direction, doesn't it? Um, can I ask? Do we? How are we going to decide which directors are going to be on the board, and how would that be? How would that be decided? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. Um, so, in answer to that, the first director is has already been decided, and, and that is Nick Broderick, the trust chairman. I think it's worth stating at this point that, that Nick has done a phenomenal job. He really has, and. Uh, he has to be on the board. Uh, he has done so much work in helping to pull things together and he continues to do so much. And, and he, he lives, not a lot of people know this, but, but uh, Nick lives up near Minehead. So he travels down on a regular basis, several times a week. He pays for his own traveling, his own, his, his own time, you know. So he needs to be on the board. He knows more than anybody else within Tust as to what is required here. In terms of the second seat on the board, so that will be effectively through a nomination process. So uh, Tust members will be able to nominate um, individuals, they'll need to be proposed and seconded. And any... <laughs> Fancy it all? <laughs> I'm sure I've got the time. <laughs> and live close to the mine head. Well, there you go, you know where we're near. So you can travel out together, can you? So, um, so those nominations would come into the Trust Board and the Trust Board then would effectively conduct like an interview process with those people that uh, wish to put themselves forward. Now it's important that the Trust Board then make that final decision because it's about ensuring that we have the right person there to, um, to represent the Trust on the board and it's got to be for the right reasons, it's got to be somebody who's willing to uh, have, the, you know, have the spare time to do it and maybe offer something different as well. You know, we're all of a certain age, I think, on the trust board, and it'd be good to have maybe some a youngster, it could be you know, a female that's um, on, on the trust board, on the, on the board on behalf of the trust. I don't know, but it's going to be for a specific purpose. Put it that way. Lovely stuff. Thanks for joining us. No worries. That's amazing. Thanks for your time. That's great. Um, also, have one last bit before we go through the interval. I have got one missed call from Sierra, and I really hope it's not them saying, oh, for what it's not coming actually. Uh, but they haven't tried it in there, but uh, I don't check that, that's all good. Uh, but uh, you should be in in a bit, so we've got one last bit. The supporters, uh, Travel Club, have also done some brilliant work for the football club. I think we'll invite Harry on stage, if you want to come up, Harry. <laughs> I am known for holding the microphone too close on the coach, so I will hold it a little bit further away. Um, I'm Harry Lovering, um, run the travel club with Mark Shepherd um, in the centre there. Um, also part of the Tust board quite recently as well. Um, I just want to say thank you, first of all, for inviting us on um, tonight and also it's fantastic to see so many of you here, um, fantastic that the groups are finally coming together, um, fantastic that we're now part of Tust, or we feel like we're involved with Tust, we're involved with Talky Talk, and we're, we're as involved as we can um, with as many different groups now as possible. That's great, so just to talk about the travel part, obviously, um, sort of the difference from last year to now and kind of how it's been going and the support of Westcott and all the sort of boards so far. It's been massively different, completely different. I mean, we've been going from having minibuses probably once every couple of weeks um, to now having, we've had four coaches. We're looking at our fifth coach on Saturday. Did George never join you? Um, no, unfortunately not. No, <laughs> no, <I'm>, <laughs> I don't think he'd have wanted to. Um, but it's been a really good start um, in terms of some of the results we've been having, um, but also a really good start in terms of the support we've had. Um, coaches have been near enough full every week. Everybody's really positive coming on. Um, and it's just really nice to be on a coach full of Talker United supporters. Really nice to be taking so many people to games. Really nice to have TUS members on board, really nice to have TUS board members on board, Talky Talk members on board, and it's just such a fantastic feel at the moment. Um, the club have really been supporting us in a variety of ways. They've given us some money towards the Chesham game, which meant that people could travel a, li a little bit cheaper. 
Um, they've also supported us by putting us in the program, they've put us on the website, and I feel like people are buying into that, which is really, really good and really positive. Um, and we, we're really enjoying it. Myself and Mark love doing it. We want to get as many away fans to games as possible. Um, and this season for me has been absolutely fantastic. I'm loving it. Great. How are the bacon rolls, Harry? Oh, they were lovely. <laughs> Absolutely lovely. Yeah, so I don't know when Scott uh, bought a cone, I think it was Farnborough, uh, yeah. bought the uh, whole coach bacon rolls on their way up, which I think just further demonstrates what great people we've got running this football club. Um, I've known Mark and Harry for a long time and been using their services when I can. And um, it's just great to see now that they're not only getting the recognition they deserve, but also the respect that they deserve. Um, I've been on many a coach where we've gone up north, been absolutely thrashed, got you know poor value for money uh, on the pitch, but they put on a fantastic service. And if you haven't been on one of their services yet, please do consider it. Um, again, they it's not one to try. Um, they very seldom make a profit, um, so unless you invest in the golden goal, of course. But, uh, <laughs> um, but they they fully deserve our support, and it's just great to see that the Brink Consortium are helping out as well. And I think it just further demonstrates that. You know, if the club are doing well, the travel club will do well, they can put more coaches on and have more initiatives. So I think it's great and long may that continue, mate. Uh, congratulations on that. You guys are doing a superb job. Yeah, thank you, Zika. I really appreciate it. Um, and also I just want to say the having Michael on was amazing. I mean, when he messaged the travel club page, I think it was the Friday morning before we were going, I was thinking, do you mean for yourself or someone else? Um, and then he rang Mark, he booked on, and when I spoke to Mark about it, I was just so, you know, not, not amazed, not surprised, but just so filled with joy, really, that our chairman, one of our co-chairmen, is on board the Travel Club, actually engaging with the supporters. Um, it was just absolutely fantastic, really amazing. And those bacon rolls as well were top draw. <laughs> Did you charge him? Uh, yes, but he wanted to pay. <laughs> <laughs> he did want to pay. He offered. He did. Did he win the golden goal as well? Did he? He did. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> he did. At first, he gave the money back to the travel. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> He's got a sponsor as well. We do. Yeah. So Torbay Facilities Management have sponsored us um, this season. Dave O'Shaughnessy. Um, again, just amazing. Um, Don't talk to me about sponsors. Oh, you've started now. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and we're promoting this business as much as possible. I mean, again, another kind of way to support a local business, another way to say, actually, fantastic, we've got somebody sponsoring us, to hopefully mean that towards the end of the season um, we can put on as many trips to away games as possible. Talky talk while still looking for a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> we did have one, I think they were past. So, <laughs> we did have one. time ago, so it's not we, really bad. We had a good game of snooker there, didn't we, once? We did, we had a good game of snooker. It was a horrible <laughs> shithole of a place. <laughs> <laughs> they paid us to sponsor, we, not, we didn't say that until after the sponsorship had finished. So. <laughs> of all the people to swear first, I wouldn't have had you down, Don. <laughs> Uh, how can people book Harry for this weekend? So I think we're on 40 now, is that correct? Mark? Yeah, he's got a thumbs up. 40 people for this weekend. So I think we've got about 12 spaces left, is that correct? 12 spaces left for Saturday. So is there anybody in the room, anybody online, anybody else that wants to book, really, really want to encourage you to book. Have a really fun day out. Every single way trip we have is filled with fun and joy and amazement. Okay, to hopefully the fact we're going to win 10 minutes on Saturday. Amazement. Wow. Well, the amazement Amazement can be a range of things, but winning the golden goal <laughs> is probably the top of that list. There we are. I think that was all at the end of part one. Thank you, Harry. Thanks, everyone. And then we'll have a bit of a break, and then we'll have to get Paul in, and then we can interview him about him and how it's going. So thank you for joining us for part one. Uh, I generally thought it'd be about six people, so I'm, I'm very impressed. <laughs> so we put the table at the front here, so the cameras are not as full, but they're actually at the back as well. So thank you, everyone, and we'll be back in part two. Yeah, a bit. Cheers. Yeah.